freshman year of high school in my civics class. Whoa, actually I was in the fourth grade. I was in elementary school going to recess. In Los Angeles, California. I was working for a stupid company. Uh, I was at home. I was in Pomona at the Wonder Bread Factory working. I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, painting. I'm a painter, union painter, painting a ceiling. I didn't really know what was going on, but then when I saw it on TV, I was pretty scared. I thought it was, I thought it was a hoax. My husband, my husband came down from upstairs. He was on the internet. I was, I was downstairs getting ready for work, and and told me about the towers. And I said, Oh, it's, it can't be true. It's got to be a hoax. And then I turned on the TV, and then of course realized pretty quickly that it wasn't a hoax. We saw it, and it was not good. I mean, it was very sad. Obviously, we at the time we had a seven-year-old seven years old getting ready for school and um, it was shocking it was, it was shocking I was shocked I didn't believe it was real this, this probably was was the, the biggest shock mm -hmm. I, I just happened to open uh, the television when the news were broadcasted and, and you know, it was it was difficult to believe I was scared to death because my daughter was in Fontana so I raced to Fontana to get my daughter they wouldn't let me have her for six hours Planes crashing into the towers. I've never seen the airplanes in the towers, of course, and the, all the smoke and people running through Lower Manhattan. Yeah, I was at the gym and I saw it when the first plane hit at the gym, and then I, then I went home. Obviously, it looked pretty bad, and and then saw the rest at home. Uh, just a plane going through a building, which uh, can't really happen because. I guess the structures of buildings are a lot stronger than that. It would have exploded earlier. I don't know, it was just a kind of weird thing. Well, I, they, they were showing the, the airplane crash into the building. Law enforcement change. Flying security wise, they got way tighter. The airport changed dramatically due to it. Well, obviously in the nation, just the whole security measures. Um, at home, also that taking into consideration having you know a kid, you just want to make sure everything's okay, and, and you worry a lot more, I think. Um, but at the same time, you you know you can't let the terrorism run your life. Yeah, I I guess I feel a little more on edge every time I go somewhere. Especially in big crowds like this a whole lot more on edge. That our country went from the home of the brave to home of the insecure and fearful and frightened. That's one change. Just, I think if the terrorists succeed in changing our way of life, that's exactly what they want to do. It's not going to, this war, quote unquote, is not going to be won on the battlefield. It's going to be won. Everything, all your rights were taken away. They, you know, all the police think that everybody's a terrorist. I mean, uh, immigrants are looked upon differently ever since because they think that everybody is a Muslim or everybody's trying to blow up a plane or something. So people's rights have been taken away because of that. I feel like 9-11 tightened us up, per se. Like it made us realize that we should have been this strict this whole time. Like I said, I think the nation is equating patriotism with fear and xenophobia. I mean, not, not the country. I think the country itself is doing pretty well. I think there's a sliver of people that are holding on. We've always been patriotic. You know, we don't go gung-ho about things, but, you know, we love America. I think it's the greatest country. And um, it's just kind of sad how we do defend everybody and we do get a bad rap a lot of times, but, um, you know, it hasn't changed how we feel about America. Well, I think we've forgotten what it is, but it's still in my heart. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, the two great patriots came out. I mean, it all depends on what do you call a patriot. I mean, you can What would you like define that as? How would you find a patriot? Mm -hmm. Actually, somebody that fights for their own country, for the freedom or the 
for uh, the well-being of our own country, but it all depends on which side you take, you know, if you're like political side or if you take the military side or if you take, you know, conscious mind side. It all depends because a lot of people take it the wrong way. Yes, it's, uh, I think it draws people apart, like it draws lines in the sand. Uh, the, the patriotism is, uh, it creates racism. How about that? It yeah. creates a racist vibe. <laughs> like, fuck Muslims, and so, uh, like, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, uh, so, so uh, yeah, it's pretty fucked up. I think there's a big conspiracy behind it. Conspiracies are a big to all sorts of problems because they can't be proven. Yeah, 9-11 is definitely, in my opinion, a conspiracy. It's, it's not real. It's manufactured. My belief systems for that, and belief is always subject to change, is uh, there's no video of a plane going into, they won't release any video of a plane going into the Pentagon. Uh, you never hear about the other building that was demoed on the same day by the same people that uh, cleaned up Ground Zero. You guys are millennials, well, you're our future, you know. We need you guys to step up and vote, but <laughs> not for the demagogue. I was in New York. Okay. I got uh caught on the Whitestone Bridge. In other words, you couldn't get in or out of New York City. I was coming from Queens, New York, mm -hmm. going over the Whitestone Bridge, which connects you to other parts of New York. Nobody, armed guard, armed soldiers with machine guns, automatic weapons, cell phones didn't work, landlines didn't work, pay phones didn't work, nothing worked. For hours and hours and hours we spent. Miles and miles and miles of cars were backed up. And the biggest issue we had was people needed to go to the bathroom. You yes. laugh. Women were crying hysterically because they they needed to use they they needed to to have a bowel movement. And so what happened was women got together and they interlocked arms and created a half circle so that the woman can take care and keep people came with tissues and everything, both men and women. Now at about 3:30 in the afternoon. All of a sudden, you're standing outside your car, as everybody was. At 3.30 in the afternoon, the air filled with this very recognizable aroma. And I turned to this guy who I never met, and I said, Who the hell is barbecuing? It was the bodies that were burned. And the air, the, car, the air current was carrying the smell of those bodies that were burned. I would say for about three to four months after, I would be lying in bed. Every time I heard a plane fly over, I would jump out of bed and run to my window and see where the hell anything was going on. I don't think I ever got over it. And that smell of the bodies burning was just, it profoundly impacted me. So I don't know what this information will do, but if it will stop another act of insanity, Thanks.